Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mystical. Today I am bringing you a video going over the best add-ons for PvP. I always see in like reddits and on Twitter about how not so beginner friendly WoW can be and add-ons always seems to come up. So I thought I'd do a video going over pretty much every add-on that I feel like you need for PvP from mandatory to like kind of mandatory to just UI changes and quality of life changes. So I'm also going to go over every setting that you're going to need and every week aura and we, when we go over week auras, everything. I'm going to give you everything that you're going to need to know because the more people that play the game, the better. The first one is going to be big debuffs and I would recommend using this no matter what class or spec you play, DPS or healer, it doesn't matter. What this does is it makes debuffs bigger. I know it's crazy. And it, it just helps with your general awareness. You know, if, if I'm a healer and I see CC that is dispellable on my teammate, it just helps me see that I can dispel it much faster. If you're a DPS and you see that your healer is in a polymorph, maybe you need to press defensive or something like that. And as far as the settings for this go, there really aren't too many that I change from the default. I think whoever the author, Jordan, does a fantastic job of having uh, pretty much everything that you need just straight out of the box. It's really nice. Um, <clears throat> I do... I don't hide other debuffs. I so what I think this means debuffs that you can and can't dispel. So like, for example, like Garot, you know, I, I can't dispel bleed, but I still like seeing who the rogue is hitting, like who the rogue is hitting and stuff like that. Um, so and then I also increase the maximum buffs because I think there's a cap right now of like I think it's like two or four. So I like to see them all. And then the cooldown count shows the duration of the CC. I, that stuff is completely up to you. You can change the anchor as well. So the anchor I have it on the left hand side. If you don't like that, just change it to the right or inner. Um, I've seen people do the bottom and top, so it, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever your preference is. I have it to the left because I have another add-on on the right hand side here. But that's kind of what I change for the size. You could just change the size of certain things. So I, what I do is I make anything that I can dispel, like dispel with CC. I make it bigger. I make it the biggest. Um, I think I had it at 72% before. So anything like that, that I, I can dispel, I will, I will make it bigger because that means I can dispel it. It makes it much easier for me to see other spells. You know, it doesn't really matter too much to me. Um, you could also customize it as well as you could see it on raid frames and nameplates. I have these disabled. There are people that don't have them disabled and it's not, it's not terrible. So you can enable it on. Uh, name place and unit frames. So I think if I toggle test mode, no, it doesn't show. It, what it'll do is it'll show on the right side of the nameplate and it'll show like if they have um, a buff or debuff on them or a cooldown, anything like, oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, so enemy nameplate. So this will show, you know, CC. I don't. I think it's super distracting, so I normally just have it disabled. But again, you can, you can have it whatever you want. The unit frame shows the character. So if you wanna see it on your teammate or on yourself and your on your name frame and then your target. That's cool too. I think it also shows on the focus as well. So it's pretty good. You could also change what you see. So if you don't want to see roots, which really aren't that important, you don't really need to, you don't need to do that. Defensives maybe is pretty good. Um, immunities, spell immunities, stuff like that is kind of handy to know. Um, and then priority. So you can change the priority of certain things. I don't actually mess around with this stuff uh, that often. I have crowd control as my number one as a hundred percent priority. So what that means is it's the order that you see the debuff next to the raid frame. So I have CC as like the number one thing I wanna see, just because as a healer, I wanna know what CC I can dispel. But again, you know, if there's other, if you're a DPS, you just wanna know certain things, you know, you can mess around with this stuff, but I pretty much just have CC set to 100 and everything else is the same. And then here you can change the spells and the, the priority and the size, which is really cool. So for example, an offensive, debuff a death mark right here for example so death mark you don't see a lot of assassination rogues right now but when they were in scene um death mark is obviously really scary so what i did is i went in here and i changed the custom priority to 100 so it's going to be you know when, when he uses it when, when the rogue uses it it's going to be the first one that i see on the left hand side and then i change the size to 100 percent. so i think this is like i think this is what 72 percent i have death mark as massive um so I would recommend anything where you feel where spells debuffs like that where kind of hard to see or hard to like you need to you know just react really quickly. Um, I would do that, and that's big debuffs. So what it does TLDR for big debuffs is it puts 
makes debuffs bigger on the on your, the raid frames. You could also see it on your unit frames or enemy nameplates, um, and it just helps with your general awareness of what's going on in the arena. The next add-on, and maybe it's some people don't consider it mandatory, but I actually think it's a really really important add-on. Um, is even if it's just for yourself, but is diminished. So what this is is it shows the DRs or diminishing returns on any unit in the game. So it's really important, even if you just use it for yourself. So I'll show you real quick uh, what that what that is. So I'm going to toggle test mode, and I use S Arena. I'll talk about that. But right here, diminish. This is going to show how much longer I'm on stun, poly DR, anything like that. It's really, really important. I love this add-on so much. And it also works with S Arena, as you can see, or Gladius. Um, so you can, you can enable it for that as well. And then what I do is I enable it for nameplates. It'll show on the nameplates, the DR that's left. Um, so I don't have to look over here on my raid frames or on the enemy frames. And it's just, it's just a good add-on. Yeah, so as far as the settings go, and again, this is another add-on that I really don't change too much. Um, for the general settings, I don't have the edge effect, which is like the, um, you know, like the little line that goes around the circle. I don't have that enabled. And then I show countdown for cooldowns. So it just shows like numbers for cooldowns. Don't change anything with, anything with the font. And then over here, you can kind of mess around. So if I toggle the test mode, you could have it change numbers depending on the DR. Testing is not fun with this. See how it went from 1DR, 2DR, 3DR. I don't like using the numbers, so I just have the color. But besides that, that's pretty much it. I have it enabled for player. So this will show the DRs on yourself. You can enable it for your party members too. Focus frame, target, uh, arena have it uh, set for. Nameplates is what I also have it set for. So I think it's really important. And then the party, I don't have it enabled. You could if you wanted to. You could toggle the move and you could see how it's like party one, two, my player. And I, I don't have that enabled. Maybe it's useful for other people. I don't find it that useful because if I'm off DR, as a healer at least, I if I'm off DR, I'm probably going to be the one getting CC'd. So maybe maybe it's helpful for DPS to have party enabled. And you could see if like your, if your healer is off DR. But for me, it's I don't find it that helpful. And then DRS, I, I don't track certain things like on myself. Let me see, I'm the player. Like I don't get disarmed as a healer. I don't get, you know, roots don't matter to me. But in cap stun silences, disorient is good. If you play a warrior, maybe it's good to see the, the disarm DRS and root DRS. But for a healer, yeah, I don't, not something I have to worry about. But very handy add on. I think it's mandatory. It, maybe it's not, maybe you don't have to use it, but just being able to know when certain things are off DR and then also not having to take your eyes off what's going on in the middle of the arena, I found that really, really helpful for awareness and not you know consistent looking at the arena frames. Next is probably the absolute goat of add-ons for PvP, and that is Omnibar. I am showing Omnibar because rumor has it, and I've tested it for two days now, uh, that there was an Omnibar fix that won't break your UI anymore, and I have not run into any issues with it. So if you've been hesitant or you've seen issues with Omnibar, I would recommend down, uh, you know, doing the update, and then it should it should work. It's worked for me. So what does this add-on do? This add-on tracks any cooldown that the enemy had, like you it, any cooldown you want. It is amazing. So. <clears throat> what I would recommend with this, and everyone's brain works differently, everyone's UI is different. What I do is I, I kind of set up my bars depending on what I want to track. So for the most part, if you play a cast or a healer, you're going to want to track interrupts. So I can test this bar right here, and look, there's there's my interrupts right there. That's This is every interrupt from you know healers, DPS, doesn't matter. And then these settings down here... What they do is the center lock, it just uh, put positions the Omnibar in the middle of the screen so it's centered. Um, show unused icons. So when you go into an arena, oh, these two, show unused icon and as enemies appear. So these two settings, what it does is when you queue into an arena, it's going to show which kicks are that the other team has and then if they're unused. If you uncheck this, it's going to hide if they use it. For me, for my brain personally, I like showing the unused icons just because I see what kicks they have and if they've used it. It just helps me um, grow rows upward. I don't actually know what this means. So I don't have any rows. I guess it grows upwards. I don't know. Countdown, uh, cool, countdown count. So this shows the, the cooldown on the kick. Show border. It just, this is preference. I like showing the border. Highlight target. Um, show names. You could show the names of it. I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. Drag multiple players. I would have this enabled because there might be a team with, you know, two 
two boomies or something. You want to know those kicks are you know, both kicks. Glow icons. This is what shows the glow when it's used. Then show two tool tips. I actually don't have it enabled. I don't. I don't want to see the tool tips. What you want to do is when you you know decide how you want to have it structured. You can go into spells and then enable and disable anything that you want. So, for example, I have this is just for interrupts. So what I did is I uncheck all. And then I go through each class and I enable their kick. And I'll go to Demon Hunter, Disrupt Druid. Druid's going to have both the Skull Bash and Solar Beam. So you want to enable both those. Evoker is just going to have their one kick. So you see, oh, maybe Evoker isn't enabled in this profile. <laughs> you want to just enable Quell. And then you just keep doing that over and over for every single class. And that that's what I have. And then <clears throat> for defensives, I do the same thing. I have the same exact setup for or settings i go into spells i disable all or uncheck all and then i just go into each one and i just track what i want that's that's what's helped me maybe it'll help for anyone else so i'll test this these are defensives right here i, I look at my raid frames a lot because i'm you know when i'm healing i just want to make sure everyone's healthy it's also a good time to check defensive and then i do the same thing with burst cooldowns so you test the burst cooldowns. I have it really close to the interrupts because for a from a healer point of view, I actually don't really care about defensives. I mean, I track defensives because I want to help my team. But as far as like a healer, or if you're just starting out to heal and you're beginning, you don't need to. I, you don't really need to have a defensive bar. I would recommend tracking bursts and interrupts, and that way you know, you know, incarns up in in a minute. I need to make sure I have my life cocoon, or like, you know, serenity is up soon. I need to make sure I have life cocoon for it and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so. Defensives, you could track it. It's really good because I feel like healers are like the quarterback of the team. And they, you know, my, my DPS are doing DPS. I mean, I'm healing, but I also want to tell my team if I, I, you have a different point of view as a healer on the arena than like other than DPS. So I just think it's good to track defensives when you can. So yeah, this is what my UI looks like uh, for, as far as Omnibar goes. So this is what I'll see a lot. I'll see interrupts. They don't overlap because there's only two or three people. There's only three people in the arena or twos if I'm doing two. So they're, they don't overlap. But yeah, really, this is like the PVP add-on that you want. No matter if you play DPS healer, it does not matter. You want this add-on. You could show it in, of course, if you do a lot of world PvP, you could show it anywhere. You could show it anywhere, change the vis visibility to it however you want. Um, but yeah, that is it for Omnibar. Again, just track any cooldowns that you want to track for the other team. I do believe that there is there is information overload, so don't track everything. Like, don't go into here and then go here and then just check all the spells and then just track all that it's just super overwhelming. There are a lot of useless spells that you don't need to track. I would, if you're just starting off with this add-on, start with interrupts, okay? I have a an import string. In I'll put it in the description, okay? I'm, I'll export the exact profile I use, copy it, paste it, import it right here, and then change it however you want. So, so far we have tracked interrupts, we have tracked major cooldowns, debuffs, all that stuff, DRs, and now you want to track your teammates' cooldowns. And this is another absolutely just insane add-on, actually for both PvP and PvE, and I'll put do, go into test mode. And what this does is this tracks your teammates' cooldowns, and this is, again, so mandatory, it's it's not even funny. So I, I really only, I only have it set up for arena. And then what you can do is I think you can go into like, if you want to use it for dungeons, you can copy settings from arena. So you only have to do one of these and I'll show you obviously what I'm doing uh, as we go. So I, I don't really change anything in general. This is another, again, all these add-ons are really, really good for just, you know, straight out of the box. There, there's just some kind of bloat to them where they're tracking a little too much. Um, as far as position goes, I just have an anchor to the right. So mentioned before that I have my big debuffs anchored to the left. That's because I've obviously see the anger to the right. And you could again, you can change it. However, your UI, it does not matter. You could have it wherever you want, literally anywhere. It doesn't matter. I've seen people go, you know, change it to like the bottom of the screen or whatever. That's cool too. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it set up like that. Um, as far as layout goes, you can change how many, you can change how many icons are on each each column. So you could change it so you can see five. You could have one big, <laughs> one big row. It doesn't matter. I think five is actually good because there's some cool, they're like warriors and rogues have a lot of cooldowns and sometimes they overlap. So that's fine. Display inactive icons as well. 
don't change much of icons and and all this. Um, as far as icons go, I, I don't. When it comes to this stuff, I don't really change it. I think the developers of these add-ons do a really good job. Of of course, if if you know you want to make it bigger, make it bigger. You know what I mean? Like, make sure it's not too distracting. But I think this was eighty percent, and that's pretty good. You could obviously, if you want to make it a little bigger, make it a little bigger. It's your UI. That's why. That's the beauty of it. Highlighting. So this glow effect when certain spells are enabled. For example, Life Cocoon would probably glow. There you go. So Life Cocoon glows because it's active. I don't change these. I think this is really good. If the glow is distracting, you can, of course, disable it. But I have it enabled. Priority. Similar to big debuffs, you can have priority on like where certain things line up. I don't change any of this stuff. I, none of this really matters to me. So like the order that it, it comes in, it doesn't matter to me. What I do recommend though, is going to spells and going into here and clear, I mean, literally clearing it all out. Let me make sure I'm on the wrong, I'm not on the, okay, I'm on default profile. So I'm not gonna, I would recommend going here, clearing it all out and then really like thinking about what the most important things are. And I'm, not, I'm gonna make a video. I would like to make a video on each spec or each class and just go through the, the you know, at, for, you know what the most important buffs are, debuffs, burst, defensive, stuff like that, which would be nice. But I would recommend obviously enabling Trinket. Adaptation, no one really uses Adapt. I don't even really track Emblem either. I I don't know. I guess I trust my DPS to press it, but if you know if you don't trust your DPS uh, or if you're learning or if you're new, you know, we want to track that, that's fine too. Racials. You could you could track will and you could track I don't really care about I don't really care that much about Shadow Mold. Um but Will to Survive is pretty good. It's basically Trinket. Usually if people are playing Will to Survive, they're not playing PvP Trinket. So Will to Survive is pretty good. Will the Forsaken is pretty good too. These don't matter. These are useless. These again don't matter. And then what I do is I go and this is what I really like about Omni City is it have it has a broken up into different sections. Which is for each class, it's it's so nice. So you have interrupts. I don't track interrupts. Okay, I know some healers that do. I don't track interrupts. That's not anything to like trust or anything. It's just like I feel like that's just super button bloat, and that's like too, so it's it's overwhelming amount of information. Like if I'm look if my teammate's dying and I'm looking over here and I see that he has a kick and I'm like big say that he has a kick. I'm like thinking, man, why isn't he kicking? I it, and then you're not healing and I I just like. It's just overwhelming for me at least. So I don't do this. Um, now the one thing, the one weird thing that I will I will enable for, for um, certain classes is their setup button. So like for example, DKs have blinding sleet. DK goes revolve around blinding sleet. They'll get the grip, they'll blinding sleet. And what you wanna do when, as the misweaver or any healer is you wanna stun on top of that so they get a good go. So especially if you're not in voice, like shuffle, or anything like that. I enable certain things like that, like blinding sleet. Most other classes I don't. So just just keep that in mind. That's kind of like their go-to. And then obviously for uh, for me as a healer, I track defensive. So for DK, it'll be AMS, uh, IBF. Those are like the two. You could track. Isn't there another one? There's the there's the other one that I completely forget what it's called. Um, maybe it's uh, scroll down. But it, Lichborn, Lichborn. Yeah, right here. Counter CC. This increased their leech. Is, I thought this was more of a defensive, but you could track Le Lichborn. I feel like this, a lot of DKs kind of just throw out Lichborn when, you know, they want to get more uptime. So some I don't really track it that much. And then you could track like the one, I would, for a healer, I would track the one major defensive so, or, or offensive cooldown, sorry. So like for Frosty Decays, Pillar of Frost. And I think for um, Unholy Decays, it's A-Bomb Limb. But I don't go further than that. I, I really don't care. I, honestly, I don't care because it, it gets overwhelming when you you have so many spells and then you got your other teammate, then you have your own cooldowns. Information overload is a thing I would recommend. Even if you don't want to track like Blinding Sleet and you want to track Death Grip instead, that's cool too. But sometimes DKs will use Death Grip for, for non ghosts So like I, I prefer Blinding Sleet. But stuff like that. So then, and then you just go through every every class and and do that, so, or yeah, every class. So if it was Demon Hunter again, I don't care about interrupts. Consume magic. It's just their purge. It doesn't matter. CC. I I really don't care. Yeah, I really don't care. Sigils don't care. I will check Blur. Um, Nether Walk is really important. Rain from above is kind of weird. You could and then you could do metas, metas and defensive. 
but um stuff like that and then i'll just track the meta and then so that's three buttons for the havoc demon hunters oh reverse magic as well the warrior warriors do have a lot of buttons so warriors uh, warriors are the reason i have to like keep make sure that in what is it the icons i have like certain <laughs> number like five in the column because they have so many warriors and rets have a lot so i do track fear i do track fear for more uh, warriors because in my opinion that's a win condition so if i see that my warrior has like fear in like five seconds i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make a you know a a call out to my team that you know we have fear in five or soon we have fear soon um can we get something going you know so something like that so i, I will track intimidation shout stormbolt as well because what uh, again it's it's like a setup thing they'll stormbolt they'll throw their hammer and then i'll try to in cap song in cap off of it and stuff like that so that's really important and then they also have defensive so die by the sword impending victory i feel like is really important fury is going to have enraged uh regeneration and duel i don't see a lot of warriors playing duel but i think duel is really important and then you have rallying cry and then you want i track avatar i don't know which avatar it is actually is i check both i guess uh blade storm doesn't really matter sharpen is okay it's a 30 second cooldown you, need to, you don't need to track that so yeah i mean that's it for this add-on very powerful if you find yourself doing arena and dungeons you could just copy settings from arena copy boom and then it's the same exact settings as this one before but again really really important add-on definitely mandatory for healers if you play a dps i would maybe just recommend tracking defensive cooldowns that way you know if your team has any cooldowns left really good really handy absolutely mandatory this add-on has gotten so much controversy it's actually insane people want it banned from arena and that is weak auras. So weak auras, I have a lot of them, mostly because I like to make them. And I will have a link to all of my weak auras in the description. I think they're already there. But what this does is this add-on does everything. It, li it literally does everything. Um, you could track any buff, debuff, a unit, a pet, any, literally anything. So I'll go over some of the major weak auras that I use. This one, so this one puts an arrow over your teammates. I always keep losing my teammates in arena, but I find them with this one. Combat set, I made this this weak aura. This just shows up in or out of combat. It's really just good for drinks. That way I don't have to look up here constantly. I can look up here and then just quickly look down here if I'm in combat and then get a drink. Burst cooldowns, defensive cooldowns. People use the Mez weak aura pack, which is, you know, they, they can use it. I made my own. I have my own weak auras. So this just shows a, a major cooldown and then the duration on it. And then I, I use the same thing for defensive cooldowns as well. So this shows enemy burst cooldowns, enemy defensive cooldowns. I also have dispels as well. So it just makes it bigger. Just makes it so it's easier for me to see dispels, really. You know, I don't have to look over here and look and, like, try to see if someone dispelled. It's big enough to see that if there was a dispel or not. Uh, Misweaver cooldown. So this is the big weak aura right here. This just tracks everything for me. Um, in one weak aura. So, you know, I have Fort Brew with a shield. I have Blackout Kick Stacks here, the little the little characters right here. Precog, if I have Precog, T of Serenity, Shout House Lessons, and what's next? Uh, Innervate if it's on me, Fort Brew. I, I basically, any Mistweaver cooldown, I can track it, or Mistweaver buff, I'm tracking it. I don't have any of those. Skill capped party bars. These are actually, th these are from Skill capped, and they just show like your teammates casting really really good this is a really really good uh weak aura because you could see if your teammate is like getting a follow-up fear if they you know or if they get interrupt so really good um and i think that might be it for yeah this this that's it for uh weak auras the main one is the mez weak aura pack i'll link that in the description i'll also link my weak aura if you like the icons more I liked Mezes a lot though, because it has everything. I just can't do the air horns. It literally has an air horn every every time. I can't do that. And if you want to disable it, I think you don't I think it's in actions. Yeah, actions and then just disable the play sound. All right, the last add on I want to go over is S Arena slash Gladius. I don't use Gladius, so if there's someone that does, feel free to link your settings. I use S Arena. What this is, is it just replaces replaces the enemy arena frames. And I actually have my own profile here too right here so this is what my s arena looks like i think it's it's a very important add-on because you could see your drs see cast bars trinkets racials everything like that uh, in between and there aren't many settings for this uh, that i really need to go through the biggest thing is positioning i just have it to the right I, some people have it like up to the left here above the raid frames there is no right or wrong way it just depends on your ui 
spec icon is just this right here. It doesn't matter. Trinkets, racials. I, you will want to track racials because of Will to Survive, um, Will of the Forsaken, stuff like that. Cast bars, you could change cast bars however you want. Doesn't if you, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. It doesn't really matter. Just whatever works for you. Diminishing returns. I actually have uh, in the global settings, I have diminishing returns turned off because I use diminish um, to track that because I think diminish has more customization than the S Arena um, DRs. If you do not want to play diminish or you don't have it, just go into S Arena and enable all of these. That's fine too. That, that's perfectly fine. Arena frames, I don't. I use percentages for health because of touch of death, which never works, but 15%, I'm spamming that button. Use class colors and then show names. So I think it's, you could hide names if you want. It's completely up to you. It doesn't really matter. Racials, I track all racials. You don't need to though. I mean, if you want, if you don't want to, it's fine. You can, you can opt to just like track dwarf human. Panda's pretty good to track. Void elf actually might be decent. Dark Iron Dwarf, Gnome's pretty good if you play with the Boomy. This, this, I mean, these are Dwarf, Dark Iron Dwarf, Human Panda, Void Elf, stuff like that. And then that is it for S Arena. So S Arena, again, really good add-on for just replacing the default arena frames. A lot of customization. Not too much though. It's not too, it's not overwhelming, which is great. I didn't know where to put this add-on, if it was mandatory or not. So I put it in semi-mandatory because you don't need it but it also but it really helps with awareness and that add-on is called plater so what plater is is it pretty much overhauls nameplates for at, at every every nameplate in the game and you c there are so many settings in here. It's, it's also not beginner friendly so i thought with like you know with an, a video like this with helping people just getting into the game and add-ons this is a very <laughs> very overwhelming add-on there are a lot of things that you could change. One one click and you can mess up some stuff. Not like permanently. Obviously, you just disable the add-on or revert back. But it's a very overwhelming add-on. I do have my own profile. A lot of people tell me that they like it a lot. So if you just want my Plater profile, I will have it in the description. It is all yours. It's has everything that you need it's what i use it's what i use next up are add-ons that aren't mandatory but they have a lot of quality of life stuff and you'll see a lot of people using them so first off we have, we have advanced interface options this shows options that used to be in the general just game settings but they were removed i think after wad or during wad and the biggest thing you'll see a lot of people use is the cvar browser so what cvars are is they these are commands that you can input into the game that you can enable or disable certain things. So I think one of them is floating combat text. So some people like to have their healing numbers or their damage, you, they could see it. You could go in here, enable floating combat text. It's right now it's zero. So I think that means it is enabled. And then you can change it to one combat. I don't really change stuff in here, but a lot of people just use it for the CVR browser. It's really helpful for just getting settings back that have been lost. Next up is easy frames. I don't change anything. This is what makes my player just look like how it is. It just changes that. I use the blizzard as well. And that's all I change. I just like how it looks. There is nothing else in here. This does not give me a competitive advantage at all in any way. I just, I just like how it looks. Frame sort. This is a pretty good add on if, especially for healers, if you want certain players in certain positions in your, in your dungeon or your, your, arena match so this will make it so I, this will always put me on the bottom of the frames i think for the most part you just want to go into this frame sort and wherever you want to be just check it so i have it on the bottom if you want to be on the bottom of the frame you check bottom for player and then sort by roll and then that's it um there's nothing else to it this will just always put you on the bottom of the frame that's it quartz is uh just a cast bar add-on Again, no competitive advantage at all. This is why these aren't mandatory add-ons, but I really like how it looks. So I use it. You could also use it for um, focus uh, focus targets and all that. So you could use it for focus. You could use it for target, anything like that. I really mostly just use it for the player. Um, it just gives you a lot of customization for the cast bars, which I like. But yeah, I don't change anything in here. You could change the size, obviously, but that's pretty much, I mean, you change the width, but <laughs> imagine having a soothing mist. Look at that. Oh my God, my soothing mist lasts forever. Look at that. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't change anything. These are good add-ons that just come straight out of the box. Just really nice. Next up is true step values. So 
this is a pretty good add-on for checking your stats. When you hover over any stat, it's going to show you if there's a penalty. I think in last, I think they added it in Shadowlands, but it's in Shadowlands. When you get to a certain percentage of a stat, you're going to lose like 10%, 20% stat, depending on how high you are. So I think for haste, if you get to like 32% haste, you're going to start losing 10% of the stat anytime you go over 32%. So you start losing as you get higher. Um, so this just shows it. That's pretty much it. It's really nice. It's really, really good add-on, really good information here too. So I would recommend it if you're a class that stacks like one one stat, like for Mist Weavers, stack Haste for Fist Weaving, stack Mastery for Cast and Mist Weaver. So anything like that, I'd recommend it. It's really, really good, uh, good add-on. And then these last two, I didn't put in mandatory, but I think they're still really good. So nameplate auras, it'll show debuffs or buffs, depending on what you want over in the nameplates. Okay. There's a lot you can do with this add-on. So it's gonna, it can show, for example, buffs like combustion for fire mages, avatar for warriors. So those big burst cooldowns, it'll also show defensives like parry from warrior, ice block, stuff like that. It'll also show your debuffs that you give the enemy. So for example, this should show in cap. Well, it doesn't want to show in cap. Oh, it's because of test mode. But it'll show in cap right here. It should also show leg sweep as well. You could track any CC that you want. So I track all the CC that I can, that, you know, my teammates have. Um, so that's what I do. What I would do with this add-on, and I don't change anything in like the general or the positioning or anything like this. You, but you could. Like that's the beauty of it. You you could. I mean, I mean it's really neat. You could change like the scale. You could change all this. Really cool. I don't change it. I just really care about the spells and what i would do again is i would just go through here and what's important so similar to omnibar and omni cd i only track major defensives and major offensive cooldowns and then cc is like the most important thing information overload is a thing you're going to be looking over everywhere you got weak orders yelling at you you got you know people pressing their major buttons you got it's everywhere just try to keep it simple i think that's the most important thing about any ui is just keep it very simple. So Adrenaline Rush is the major cooldown for Outlaw Rogue. So we're going to keep that enabled. Alter Time is from Mages. Really important. So good defensive cooldown. AMS is for DKs. Arcane Power, I actually don't care about. Archangel is from Disc Priest. I think it's 20%. Yeah, it's 20% healing. I don't even see that many people using it. So I don't use this. Ascendance is not even a spell for PvP, I don't think. Turtle is from Hunters, which is important. Asphyxiate is the stun from DKs. So this is pretty good because if you're playing with a DK, you can CC off that. Astral Shift is good. Um, or Mastery, I do track. Avatar from Warriors. Avenger Shield, I don't really care. Axe Tosses from Demo Warlocks. And then so I just keep going through here. I don't care about Between the Eyes. I don't care about Berserker Rage. I don't care about Banish. You know, stuff like this. Biting Shot, I don't care about. Um, Blade Storm is actually important for monks because you can disarm into it and they can, um, you know, immune it. So we do care about that, but everything else, I just really focus on major cooldowns and then CC because I think CC is the most important thing you want to see. And you have plenty of other cooldowns that can track burst cooldowns. So that's what I use for this add-on. And then the last one that I do get some questions about is nameplate cooldowns. And this is kind of, I kind of have two add-ons that track cooldowns. I use Omnibar for tracking interrupts, and I use this add-on for tracking cooldowns under people's nameplates. The only change that I make is the Y coordinate offset. I change it to negative 40 right here. So this is what puts it underneath their nameplate because by default, it's like up here, and now I have it down here. Really, really good. And this just tracks cooldowns. It's similar to Omnibar. I know I basically have two add-ons that track cooldowns, but... The reason I like this add-on specifically is because I don't need to look down at my Omni bar to to see, like see if there's a cooldown available or not. So I I like being able to look up, look in the middle of my screen, and I see what cooldowns are available. It can get a little cluttered. Don't get me wrong. And I don't know why there's no. I can't select spell here. I don't. I don't know why what that's about. But maybe it's bugged or something. But very similar to Omnibar is the process in Omni CD. Just go through the spells and only enable like I don't even care. I don't care about trinkets. I don't care about nothing. I only care about major cooldown and major defensive. So for example, mage, ice block combustion, warriors, parry, and die by the sword. That's it. You do not want too much information. Otherwise, you're going to get very overwhelmed. You're going to be getting, again, you have plenty of other add-ons that do the same thing. I just like this because of just the nameplates. 
The last add-on is only useful if you have an Absorption Shield, so Disc Priests and Mistweavers, I think it's really important. And it's called Overshield, and what it does is it puts an overlay on your raid frame with how much Absorption is left. I don't know why this isn't a default Blizzard UI, because without it, you just see like a little like white, I don't know, it's weird, like shows that there was absorption, but it doesn't show you how much. So I really like having overshields as an option. Really good just for awareness and just more information that you're gonna need if you're a misweaver or a disc and not really mandatory for anything else. And that is it for this video. These are the add-ons that you need for PvP. A, mix, a combination of mandatory add-ons and then other just useful quality of life add-ons. If you have any add-ons that you use and I didn't mention it, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions or share my profiles of any add-on uh, that you that you want. And that is it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.